Hey folks, hope you've got your Big Freeze 9 beanies ready to go. Uh, and if you haven't, uh, make sure to head into your local Coles or Bunnings uh, to get your Big Freeze 9 beanie. Hopefully they're still on the shelves because they are selling rapidly as they always do. Such a wonderful cause. And to donate, don't forget to head to fightmnd.org.au. Let's get straight into the round 12 recap. Round 12 started on Friday night. The Demons taking on the Blues. The D's winning 61-44. to Yes, uh, great to see the D's get the win. On the other hand, the Blues uh, just really struggling to get their season back on track, as I mentioned these last couple of weeks. But overall, in my opinion, this was a poor game of football by both sides because both teams lacked composure. They were kicking it back and forth to each other and it was sloppy at times, just not the classy football uh, that we've seen uh, from a team like the Demons in the past. And uh, even the Blues, uh, you know, I know they're struggling results-wise, but just really struggled to keep it together. Uh, other than that, Yes, the D's get the win, but I would have liked a stronger game of football to start off round 12. Uh, speaking of strong, Port Adelaide, the power are just trotting over everyone at the moment. Looking like the team to beat uh, as they beat the Hawks 151-96 at uh, the final scores. At half time, the power were up by 82 points. They had 105 points in that first half, and they're the first team to score 100 plus points in the first half of football since the Tigers back in 2019 when they took on the Giants. Port Adelaide, that's their ninth straight win. That's their longest winning streak in Port Adelaide history. Uh, Ken Hinckley and his team going really well uh, and looking good in the top eight. Jeremy Finlayson, well done. He kicked five goals in what was a dominant performance by Port Adelaide. Uh, the Eagles took on the Pies. The Eagles losing 57 to 120. Uh, the Eagles... Didn't go so well in that first quarter. Second and third quarter, they started to kick goals, uh, started to find a way on the scoring sheet, and then in the fourth, the Pies wrapped this one up. Nick Dacos, he is going um, really well this season. For a player uh, who is so young, uh, he's just so classy at times. You love to see it. Definitely a contender uh, in the top five for the Brownlow, that's for sure. Uh, he had three goals, 30 disposals. A great game uh, by Nick Dacos. He had a great game. Jordan Degoe, on the other hand, a big mistake. Uh, a nasty bump on Elijah Hewitt. Just didn't need to do it. But when you do mistakes like that, it's going to cost you games. You're going to need to pay the price. And I would say uh, that he'd miss about uh, four weeks uh, of footy. He's been sent directly to the tribunal. No need for that. And uh, I'm sure, hopefully, he can learn from his mistakes. The Dogs took on the Cats. The Dogs losing 75 to 97. Well, they were fighting like cats and dogs out there. But the Dogs, they needed to be better in front of goal. They've had these opportunities in these last couple of games of football and they just can't make the most of them they've got to be accurate in front of goal and at times they just blew some opportunities the cats uh well done to the reigning premiers get that win and hopefully they can be consistent from this point onwards and start up a bit of a winning streak dogs on the other hand need to find their way back on the winners list as soon as possible and they'll be searching for it in round 13. the suns took on the crows the suns winning 112 to 87. the suns are traveling well uh this season and i'm loving uh uh, the efforts from a variety of players. Uh, they're getting into a ninth rhythm and uh, great to see them get these last uh, couple wins in the last couple weeks and uh, hopefully they enjoy the bye because uh, that's who has the buys. It's the Cats and the Suns have the bye for round 13 and uh, hopefully they can come back uh, in round 14 and get another win. On Sunday, the Giants took on the Tigers. A close game of footy. Uh, Giants losing 104 to 110. Marlon Pickett kicked the winner uh, and the Tigers hold on in a close one on the road. Great to see him get the four points. Then we had another close game of football to close off uh, round 12. The Bombers beating the Roos 105 to 99. It was a back and forth game. Both teams gave it their all. Massimo D'Ambrosio, the hero, kicking the goal with about two minutes to go uh, and the Bombers held the ruse off. 
Look, I know it was a loss, and I know it's heartbreak for North Melbourne, but I'm proud of the Roos. I'm proud of their effort in this game, and I'm proud that they stayed in the contest. The ver variety of players, in, especially our youth, are uh, really getting involved. George Wardlaw was brilliant. He was all over the football. He was hungry for it, and I loved seeing that from a young player. And I know people are saying, yeah, North are struggling. They're a bottom four team. And yes, we're not getting the results, but all I care about at the moment is seeing that effort, especially from the youth, and seeing them be consistent throughout four quarters. We made this a game. They didn't give up. They kept fighting. Well done, Ruse. And hopefully we can build that foundation, build that core of our team, starting from these uh, young players like Wardlaw, Eddie Ford, Phoenix Spicer, and the list goes on. Yes, we're not good at the moment, results-wise, but give it a couple years, and we're slowly building that core of our team, which I love to see. We've got the youth, and we've got some experience. That leads me straight into Isaac's GMP of the round. Goal mark and player of the round. Let's get straight into the goal of the round. Speak of experience, speak of a legend at North Melbourne, Luke McDonald. Uh, what a goal this was by the shin boner, a long bomb from inside the squ centre square. It was about 65 metres out or so, and he just went bang. What a strong kick by Luke McDonald. Uh, Nick Larkey was on the goal line, could have marked it, he left it, and it went straight through. Uh, well done to Al Mack on that one, a lovely goal. My mark of the round goes to a demon, and it goes to Bailey Fritch, a lovely specky on Brody Kemp. And just to see Bailey Fritch land on his feet, turn and go, uh, just a quick and classy grab, and he just kept going, uh, made it look oh so natural and so smooth, well done to Bailey Fritch on that great grab. My player of the round, a couple to choose from, but I did go with a tiger in Tim Taranto, one goal, 36 disposals, he had four marks, five tackles, nine clearances, he also had three inside 50s and 630 metres gained, uh, six score involvements, all around the football, uh, such a great player, and he's starting, uh, you know, these last few rounds, you see Tim Taranto really be that go-to man for the Tigers and be consistent, having strong games. He's really gelled into this team now and found his feet uh, in this Tiger um, squad. Uh, well done, Timmy Taranto, because you're going really well these last few weeks, and hopefully uh, he goes well for the rest of the season. As I mentioned earlier, folks, the Cats and Sons can put their feet up and uh, watch a bit of footy, uh, have a have a couple beers maybe, and uh, have the rest as I've got the bye. As we head into round 13, we've got five days of football. We've got footy spread across Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and then the King's birthday. I cannot wait uh, for the Big Freeze 9. A few sliders have been announced already, still a few more to come during. Uh, the week. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you donate fightmnd.org.au. Such a wonderful cause for a wonderful man in Neil Danaher. It starts on Thursday night. The Swans taking on the Saints at the SCG. My tip, I'm going for the Swans on the home turf by 23 points. you got to love footy. Like that recap and you want to see more of my content, remember to hit that thumbs up, like, comment and hit that red button down there that says subscribe. Much appreciated. For more content, follow me on my Facebook page and also my Instagram page.